If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Romans. To the fifth chapter of the book of Romans, I'm going to read the first six verses. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his, this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, I thank you for the reading of thy word. Lord, I pray now that you'll anoint your servant, give him words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and words of anointing, Lord. And let him say something to touch some heart in here. And Lord, if there be one person in here that has a need, if they're sick in the body, whatever it might be, Lord, I pray that you touch him here this morning. And let him leave out of here different than he came in, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost just flood this place in a special way. Our Lord, let us leave out of here different than what we come in, God. We just love you. We honor you. We praise you. And we magnify your holy name. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning on salvation by grace. And, you know, I checked, I've done a little research on this here, and that word grace is in the Bible 171 times. So there, are, there must be something to that word. If it wasn't for the grace of God, none of us would be here this morning. Amen. And, Amen. And, I, and, and grace and faith, they go hand in hand. You, and through, through this here grace, we have salvation. And, you know, we had a, a, a Lord that loved you so much that he went to the cross. Not for the, not for the people that are, are Christians. That's not who he died for. He died for the ungodly, the sinners. That's what, He died for you and me. That's what I'm telling you about. He went to that cross because he loved you so much. And, and I love him this morning. I can never repay him for what he has done for me. But I thank him every day for everything that he does for me. And the old devil will come in so many times and he'll try to destroy what God has put here for you. But I tell you what, I rebuke him in Jesus' name and he got to flee. I just love the Lord this morning and I can never thank him enough for everything that he does for me. The Bible tells us that if we believe through grace, oh, oh the, the, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord, uh, will save us. That's all we got to do is believe. And he'll save us just as he saved uh, the Pharisees, uh, uh, just as he saved uh, the disciples, just as he saved us Gentiles. He will save you. But we got to believe. Believe on the name of Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Amen. And that's what we got to do this morning. We got to believe that there. And I believe Amen. that he's coming back yes, to those yes. that are ready to meet him. That's yes, the one yes. he's coming back to get. And, uh, you know, you say, well, I'm not ready to go. Listen, if you are born again Christian and you've been washed in the blood, you're ready the moment he's ready to come. You think that uh, you've got a lot more life to live down here? Listen, I want to go be with Jesus when he's ready for me to go. And you know what? 
think not one of us in here going till he's ready for us to go. Amen. Amen. And when he gets ready for you, hey, your rapture might take place in a few minutes. Or Jesus might rapture the whole world tomorrow. I don't know. Nobody knows it. No. But let me tell you what, nobody knows but God himself. Right. And, and that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on him to make that final decision. But I'm telling you here this morning, we need to be ready because nobody knows the time, the hour, or the day. Amen. But if you're ready, it doesn't matter. Amen. It's like that game we play. Here I come, ready or not. And I want to be ready. I want to be ready when Jesus is ready to come back and get his church. Amen. And that's what we're looking forward to. You and I are being justified freely by his grace through the redemption of a man called Jesus Christ. All this is through the grace that God has given to us, sent to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And if it wasn't for grace, have you ever thought where you would be? We wouldn't be in here this morning, I'm going to tell you. But I thank the Lord because he loved you so much and he loved me so much that he come and died on the Calvary for you and I that old rugged tree that Peter, the apostle Peter talks about, I'm telling you what, my God is a, but listen, he didn't stay there. That's the thing, he didn't stay on that tree. They took him down and put him in the tomb and he didn't stay there. And he, he rose out of that tomb and he sat at the right hand of the Father. What's he there for? For you and for me. If you have a problem, just call to Jesus right now. He's there to make that intercession for us where we can have that life and have it more abundantly. You've got something to praise Him for. Amen. Oh, my God. My God. I love Him this morning. I just thank Him. I thank Him for grace. He's a healer, y'all. You say, well, I had never seen a miracle in perform. Oh, uh, when he saved your soul, that was one of the greatest yeah. miracles yeah. that yeah. ever was. Amen. Yeah. If you don't think so, just think about the life you used to live for just a, a moment. Oh, it ought to make you rejoice and just praise and worship the Lord. Because without salvation, you have no chance to make it into heaven. If the Apostle Peter was given his address, let me see if I can go back to it real quick. Before the council there, the Sanhedrin council there, did he, uh, he said these here words here. I'm trying to see exactly where it was. I've done looked at it one time before. <clears throat> All right, I got it now. It says, "Never." I don't, if y'all want to write it down, you can. It's in, in in the same fifth chapter, the fourteenth and fifteenth verse. It, Nevertheless, death. Reign from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who the figure of him that was come. We talk about Jesus Christ coming. He says, but not as the offense, so also the free gift. For if any through the office, offense of one, many be dead. But 
much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man. That's the man that went to the cross of Calvary for you and I. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. He has abounded many. He is a... If, if nothing else, you, you ought to be thanking Jesus, Lord. I thank you for what you have done in my life. Amen. Hey, listen. You've got children, and we all do, that is not living where they're supposed to be living. Yeah. But yeah. don't you thank God because he hasn't taken them out of yeah. your life, yeah. and yeah. he's merciful and graceful to where he'll yeah. give them time to get their lives together. I just thank him. You know, we don't understand everything that happens. And if, but listen, just do what Solomon said. You train them up in the way that they shall go, and when they get old, they'll not depart. I'm not saying they won't leave church for a while, but listen, if you train them when they're young, they're going to come back to Amen. God's house. Amen. God's got his hand upon them, church. And we need to do Amen. what God tells us to do. We were talking before church about people praying to Mary, praying to the priest, mm. and believing in purgatory. Mm -mm -mm. The only way you can go to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm telling I'm tell you what the Bible says. Amen. And when you leave from here, the Bible don't say you're going to purgatory. No, that's right. The Bible says the, the absence in body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that's, hey, the moment that, that I give my last breath, my soul's going to leave this here old shell that I'm in. Amen. And it's going to go one place or the other. That's right. And listen, I'm trying everything that I can to make sure when it leaves, and I'm going to go to be with Praise the Lord. God. And that's what I want to do. I want to be precious with the Lord. And that, that is my desire. Paul said to, the, to these Romans here, he says, and he says, uh, if, if by grace, then it's no more of works. He says, otherwise grace is no more grace. See, you will be rewarded according to your works. I agree with that Amen. there. But you've got to have the grace to make it. Amen. It says, but if the works then, it be no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So what I'm trying to tell you is the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all people. The grace of God has appeared to all men, all women, all boys, all girls. Did you know, I don't remember who who said it, uh, told me, but the reason they put in all these satellites and televisions all over the world and everything, uh, because Jesus Christ is not coming back until every human in the world has had a chance to make it right. Everybody's got, gonna have to have a chance. And I'm telling you, if you have sin in your life, he's giving you a chance right now to get rid of it. He's having you giving you a chance to make it right. Amen. Sister Dorothy came to me Wednesday night and told me that they'd moved their camp away over to Harry's fish camp. She said, I don't look like I'm gonna be able to get to church now. Because it's so far. She said, before we was at Mill Creek, it wasn't far. I said, we only have church on Sunday morning. You see, she's sitting back. <laughs> see here. God will bless you if you do what you're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. If you do what you're supposed to do, you'll get a blessing. Yeah, that's why I like that part that was in the, the book there this morning yeah. about Solomon, and that thing just stuck in my heart. Solomon could have prayed for anything, yeah. but he prayed for wisdom. 
And that, you see what that wisdom brought him? It brought him wealth and fortune. Yeah. Brother Joseph back there said, he, if he had a wish, he'd wish for a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard I heard a preacher on TV this morning I believe it uh, might have been Charles Stanley saying talking about would you rather have all the wealth and the fame and the fortune or would you rather have Jesus because when you die what you would do with that wealth and fortune that, I, that hit me so Man, I enjoy, I don't watch Charles all the time, but I enjoyed that this morning. I'm telling you, he was preaching on knowing about the Bible. So many people read the Bible, they don't even know what they read. But there's a lot of them don't even read it. It's like that song, Dust on the Bible, Dust on the Holy Word. The words of all the prophets and the sayings of our Lord. Of all the other books you'll find, there's none salvation hold. So I want you to get the dust off the Bible yes. and yes. redeem your soul. I'm telling you what, we need to read the Bible yes. and we need yes. to understand it. Yes. And if we don't understand it, we need to study and research. Yes. Because God has a plan in life for every one of us. Yes. And we need to do according to God's plan. I just thank him for everything that he does for me daily. All right, I'm to the bottom of the barrel now. I got one more thing that I want to say to you, hopefully. You and I, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. In other words, what I'm telling you, church, if you're a born-again Christian, if you've been redeemed, if you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you're going to be adopted, not into no Hall of Fame, like these music stars do and these football players and base, but you're going to be adopted into the kingdom of God. Because you're going to have royal blood flowing through your veins. Amen. And that's worth more than all these here adoptions that they go into these here uh, music awards and where they're adopted in these kind of But I want to go see Jesus. That's my desire, Amen. to go see Jesus. Amen. And I don't have much money. I don't have much assets. But I got Jesus, so I'm a, I'm a rich man. Amen. Somebody used to say a rich poor man. I might be poor on these things, but I'm rich in heart because I got Jesus in my life. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, I love you so much. And I thank you for everyone that come out here this morning, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you'll touch everyone in this here building. Lord, if there's one in here that's not living just like they ought to live. Lord, I pray that you'll just convict them. Let the Holy Spirit just tug upon that heart to where they'll make that decision. Oh, Lord, and, and come and, and leave it all at Calvary, Lord. Lord, we just love you so much and we thank you. And while, I, while, while all eyes are closed and all heads are bowed, is there one in here that will slip up that hand and say, Preacher, I need prayer because I'm not living yes, yes, yes. Oh, God knew these are hands. And I'm going to pray for y'all. Because I'm going to pray for you right where you sit. And I, because I want you, I want you to understand that there's a God in heaven that loves you. And he loves everything about you. He just don't love the, the bad things that you do. And you know, it's just like this here. Every one of y'all in here, you better love me. Because if you don't love me, you're not going to heaven. I don't care if you don't like me. If I do something, if, if you don't like about me, pray for me. Yeah. But you've got to love me. Let us pray for you. these here 
right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, you saw all these hands that were raised. And Lord, all they got to do is confess with their mouth right now and believe in the heart that uh, you raised your son Jesus from the dead. Oh, and it's all going to be gone. They're going to be a different creature, Lord. And God, touch them in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, be with us, Lord. Touch every heart. Draw us closer to you. Help us to be a better Christian, a better worker for you, Lord. God, have your mighty way in our lives, Lord. We don't want to see nobody perish and go to hell, Lord, but we want to see it when we do die, uh, Lord, that we'll go to that there uh, throne in the sky to be up there with you, Lord, uh, uh, that place called heaven, uh, oh, Lord, uh, where uh, I have not seen and ear not heard, nor feel in the heart of the man the things that you've got in store for us. Lord, just have your way in our lives, and we'll honor you and praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen.